Thanks. Thank yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I asked for a lapel thing. I, I hate standing behind the podiums. Do you think that the film made me 10 pounds heavier? <laughs> I, I felt like it. Um, it was very nicely done. Um, so when you're a young lawyer, for those of you who are not lawyers in the room, when you're a young lawyer and you're just starting out and you spend hours and days getting ready to go to court and you get to the courthouse and your opponent's there standing next to you, and the judge is in front of you, and the judge starts tearing into your opponent. And oh my God, he's, he or she is arguing your case. They always teach you, the lawyers here know what they teach you, shut up, you're winning the case, let the judge argue your case. Well, I feel like I've won tonight, <laughs> but as my colleagues in the room know, I will not shut up. Um, so first of all, uh, Caesar, I can't really see you out there, but uh, there you are. Caesar, uh, I love you, you're a dear friend, and I can't thank you enough for the kind words. So Caesar is the definition of a leader. Uh, I found a quote last week on the internet, I have no idea who said this originally, so you can just attribute it to me, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and it goes like this, and it reminds me of Caesar. The people we surround ourselves with either raise or lower our standards. They either help us to become the best versions of ourselves, or they encourage us to become lesser versions of ourselves. We all need people in our lives who raise our standards, who remind us of our essential purpose and challenge us to become the best version of ourselves. And I have been lucky for these last 18 years to have that guy as one of those people in my life, and I'm very fortunate. Thank you, Caesar. So you heard a lot about my law firm. I have been very lucky for those 18 years to be in the single most philanthropic law firm in the world. And there's some study actually that just came out recently and said I wasn't BSing all these years when I said that to people. Uh, it's in our DNA. It's part of the firm's corporate culture. When I interviewed for my job there 19 years ago, uh, Caesar, Richard Rosenbaum, who you saw in the video, Larry Hoffman, one of our founders, um, they all talked about it in the interviews. It, usually that's a sort of a financial chat. And yet in all of these conversations, it was about how this culture at this firm is about more than just doing legal work. And so for me, I, I bought into that on day number one. And I've been very fortunate today as the head of recruiting, strategic recruiting at the firm, that I get a chance in those same meetings to pay that forward and to talk about that to people and to hope that when they come in the door, they understand that that's an essential part of who we are. Um, I would uh, be remiss if I did not thank and uh, really share this award with my wonderful wife, Marcy. She, she is, uh, for those of you who know her, she is my rock. She is my strength. Uh, she is the wisest person that I know. She uh, has been a great mother. Those kids up there, uh, she did all that. Uh, she's been an incredible parent. Uh, and Marcy, in her own right, is a great community leader. She works with the elderly through the Co Council for Jewish Elderly in Chicago uh, tirelessly and is really an incredible leader her herself. So I found this quote from Winston Churchill that I think really exemplifies Marcy. Uh, he said, we make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. And that's Marcy. And I will tell you, uh, can I digress for just one minute? You guys, I have the microphone, you don't. Um, <laughs> so I'll digress for just one minute and, uh, and just tell you, uh, some of you know this story, but uh, personal moment. I am celebrating not only Hobie tonight, but um, thanks to the amazing assistance of my wife who got me through this every inch of the way. Uh, <laughs> I am celebrating my one year anniversary from my cancer surgery this week. not have done it without Marcy. Thank you. Um, so good night for a party after this, uh, if you're around. So the kids you saw in the video, that's the thing Marcy and I are, are the proudest of. It, it really is very analogous to what you heard about Hobie this evening uh, about and what
what Caesar talked about, about digging that well, um, you know, we're most proud of the fact that our kids are involved in the community. They are doing things. Uh, Jenna, our daughter-in-law who's here, is working on that project with Pastor Harris uh, on the south side of Chicago to fight violence. Uh, we are extraordinarily proud of all of our kids for the things that they're doing. It's the thing we are the proudest of. For my friends who were in the video, stop emailing me. You are not getting royalties from Netflix for the video. <laughs> Not happening, but I love you for being in that video and can't thank you guys enough. Pastor Harris, uh, he's the hero in the room. Uh, the things he's doing on the south side of Chicago are unbelievable. He's my inspiration. Uh, that story about the law firm and, and how a third of our office showed up to hear him and, and to volunteer to help him. Uh, what he's doing is transformational in the city of Chicago and, and uh, if the Hobie young people in this room are looking for something to volunteer on, uh, that's, that's a project you ought to go find. Uh, I want to thank the Adventures. Uh, my partner, Nancy Mitchell, you're the best. Uh, can't thank you enough, Nancy. Caesar, how about that for a hire? I did, <laughs> I, I did that. Uh, okay. Uh, my, my dear friend, Mitch Copeland, my partner in all things fun. Uh, love you, Mitch. Thank you for your efforts tonight. Uh, Jeffrey Cohn, uh, David Ferguson, Monica Bach Schroeder, and my buddy who introduced me to Hobie, uh, John William, Jack Butler, uh, my friend. Thank you, Jack. A great, a great community leader, a great role model and community leader in our community. And uh, the things you're doing with Hobie are fantastic, Jack. Uh, I want to thank the Hobie leaders for this recognition and for all the work that you do. Uh, I wish my partner Jason Lewis could have been here. He's a Hobie ambassador from his youth and a board member of Hobie. And uh, for the other honorees, you guys were amazing. I thought it was going to be hard to follow Caesar this evening. Uh, you guys and the beautiful performers uh, made it near impossible to follow any of you. Um, so a little bit about, about the theme of the evening. It, it is really a privilege to be a part of any program that is all about volunteerism and all about leadership. To the young people in the room, I think you're back there, because uh, that was the loudest part of the room all evening. Um, look, I would just encourage you that throughout your lives to make this kind of volunteering, just like the young people who got the awards, a part of your life, not a moment in your life, but make it really a part of your life. And be like those in the video, be like Cesar Alvarez, be like Pastor Harris, and lead others, lead others, multiply yourself and lead others uh, in all the things that you do. Find your inspiration wherever you can find it. For me, as Caesar said, it is from my religion. It's from my Judaism, from my faith. And a basic tenet, I'll give you a little lesson here in, in Judaism. Uh, take notes in the back of the room. Um, a basic tenet of Judaism is a concept called tikkun olam, and it means repairing the world. The idea is that we're responsible not only for our own moral, spiritual, and material welfare in this world, but also for that of society as a whole. And there's really not a word for charity in the Jewish religion. Uh, the charity typically means generosity. It means magnanimity. Uh, but in Judaism, uh, the word we use is tzedakah. And the root of that word, tzedek, uh, means something very different. It means righteousness. It means justice. It means fairness. And Judaism teaches that that righteousness, that justice, that's an obligation that we all share to try to cause that in the world. And so when we look at what others call charity, uh, we look at it in terms of it being an obligation to give back to the community and to do what's right in the community. When you think about it, this, this repairing the world concept has been around for thousands of years. And yet if you look around today, the needs are as great as they have ever been after all those thousands of years. There's hunger, uh, there are poor people, there's the sick, there's needs for new medicines, there's needs to deliver those medicines to the ill, uh, there's injustice in the world and the need to stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves, uh, the elderly, uh, education, helping people learn more so they can better their own lives and that of their families jobs, uh, no bigger thing you can do than to help a person get a job to support themselves, uh, disasters all over the world and the need to aid those with disasters. None of that's gone away. It's all still here today and there's a present need as there's ever been to repair the world. 
Albert Schweitzer, uh, the namesake of the award, said, I don't know what your destiny will be, but one thing that I do know, the only ones among you who will be really happy are those who have sought and found how to serve. So to the young people in the room, I wish you the happiness that Albert Schweitzer speaks of. Thank you to Hobie on behalf of my family, my friends, my colleagues in the room, because you gave us a chance tonight to do our obligation to repair the world. So thank you all very much.